And my personal question to you is why not you? You've got the brains, you can make decisions, you can study the plan, you can change your life, you can grow immensely in the next few years, you can make your dreams come true, you can build a financial wall around your family nothing can get through, you can become healthy, you can become powerful, why not you? I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. It's all risky. The minute you were born, it got risky. If you think trying is risky, wait till they hand you the bill for not trying. If you think investing is risky, wait till you get the tab for not investing. See, it's all risky. Getting married is risky. Having children is risky. Going into business is risky. Investing your money is risky. It's all risky. I'll tell you how risky life is. You're not going to get out alive. You eventually, you are going to have to jump. You cannot just exist in this life. You have got to try to live. If you are waking up thinking that it's got to be more to your life than it is, man, believe that it is. Believe in your heart of hearts that it is. But to get to that life, you're going to have to jump. In life, folks, you cannot change your life unless you change something. If you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. No matter what it is. Many times you say to yourself, I got to lose weight, I got to lose weight. I'm too fat. And then you know what? During the day you eat, you eat at night, and the next day you get mad at yourself. Well, what do you want? What do you want? You got to change something. Imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? Don't waste your time. Do you know that everybody alive gets exactly the same amount of time we get all there is? It's what we do with it that makes the difference. Don't waste your life. Set your goals high. Quit thinking about what's wrong. Start thinking what's right. Love a little more, hate a little less. You have no idea what you're capable of doing. Make up your mind today, you're gonna to figure it out. You ever feel like nothing good was ever gonna to happen to you? I don't wanna just survive. It says in these movie writing books that every character has an arc. You understand? Like everybody starts out somewhere and then they do something, something gets done to them, changes their life. That's called their arc. Where's my arc? I hear the clock ticking. That's what I hear. And the end is nigh and time waits for no man. And you young guns out there, 18 years old, 20 years old, 24 years old, listen. Life goes by, and it goes by quick. Don't waste those years. Don't waste them. Live them. I was running by a graveyard, and I was fucking just trying to become, I was fat. And I ran by a graveyard, and I looked out there, and don't fucking die like this, bro. Don't die like this. I mean, I think the, the unfulfilled potential is the story of most people's lives. What are you taking? Um, I'm taking political science right now, but I'm thinking of switching to marketing. Um, you were told that if you didn't go to college, you would never amount to anything, okay? Then you get to college, and you're taking these classes because you were told you had to go here anyway, right. but you don't really know what you want to do and don't know who you are. So at the end of the day, you end up with a degree that you can't use. Doesn't mean anything. Because you don't know what the fuck you want to do. David Goggins. I see my name. I see all this shit. And God goes, hey, you say, read this, man. And I'm reading this list and I'm seeing 182 pounds, 
Navy SEAL, Ranger School, motivational speaker, changing lives. Okay, man, pull up record, all this shit. And I'm like, that's not me, man. And God looks at me and says, that's who you were supposed to be. The fear is never reaching your potential. That's it. That always falling short, always quitting before you're done, always procrastinating, always yep. not doing the right thing. And then one day you're an old man. Yep. And you look back and go, God, I could have been great. Yep. It could have been great. I became obsessed. I became obsessed with being the baddest motherfucker that God ever created. Am I that? I don't care. I believe it. And I was trying to tell him, once you become obsessed with something, obsessed, it's okay to be unbalanced for a while. It's okay. Don't be all this stuff. People say, you got to be balanced. To be the best in the world at what you do. It's not about being a Navy SEAL, people. The best at what you do, you have to be unbalanced to find every bit of fucking energy and strength that you have to pull it off. Then you get balanced once you become great. When you're passionate, everybody cheers you on. They're stoked for you. Oh, you found your passion? Awesome. Follow your passion. Live with passion. Be passionate. Chase your passions. Everything, like passion, 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 passion. Passion's good. Like the world's gonna be like, yay, passion. Right? When you're obsessed, they're like, why are you gonna be so crazy? Why can't you be satisfied? Why do you always gotta get things so perfect? Why do you spend so much time here? When you're obsessed, people think you're nuts. So it's different. And it's like, I always tell people, if no one thinks you're crazy, you're not yet operating to the outer limits of your potential. You're not there yet. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. You got to be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really want to be successful, some days you will have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you got to want it. In any, whatever you do, you've got to be a little bit gone to it. You're not all there. You've got to be almost insane to your craft. Not a lot of people can understand that. That's why I don't know about nothing else. I do not pay attention to nothing else. There was games of football on yesterday. There was rugby, there was this, there was that. And like normal society is like, let's talk about this, and let's, let's engage in this. And I just don't, I can't do it. I just don't, I'm, I, people are talking to me and in my head I'm, I'm counting something. I'm counting up a number or I'm, or I'm knee deep in a sequence on the mat or in, on the feet. That's my life, sequences and numbers, nothing else. I cannot pay attention to nothing else. Do you love this game? I mean, love it with your whole heart. Because if you don't, let's not even bother. Let's not open that door, they're just gonna slam it right in our face. I love this game, I live this game. And there's a thousand other guys waiting in the wings who are obsessed with this game. Obsession's gonna be talent every time. You got all the talent in the world, but are you obsessed? Is it all you ever think about? Let's face it, it's you against you out there. When you walk on that court, you have to think I am the best guy out there. I don't care if LeBron's playing. So let me ask you again. Do you love this game? There's a moment when every boy realizes no one's coming to save him. And that's when he becomes a man. And some boys never get there and stay children forever. I've trained 99% of my life alone. No one pat me on the back. I did all of the work alone. And while I'm still hard on myself, I know what I did. Reminder that if you want to be exceptional, you're going to be different from everyone else. That's what makes you exceptional. You can't fit in and also be exceptional. Both have discomfort. When you fit in, you have internal conflict because you're not being 100% you. When you're exceptional, 
You have external conflict because everyone sees you as different. Pick one. When your friends start to say, you've changed, remember it's because they don't know how to say, you've grown. No one's effing coming to save you. Yeah. No one's going to make you better at your business. No one is going to get you to be a better persuader of people or framer of people other than you. The bottom line is, no one's coming. No one. No one's coming to push you. No one's coming to tell you to turn the TV off. No one's coming to tell you to get out the door and exercise. Nobody's coming to tell you to apply for that job that you've always dreamt about. Nobody's coming to write the business plan for you. It's up to you. It's time to stay focused. It's time to decide, fuck clubs, fuck partying, fuck trying to fit in and socialize, rub elbows with everybody so people can stop calling you weird. Why are you so antisocial? Because I'm trying to get it. Why are you staying on the basketball court so much? Because I'm trying to get it. And because you're only ever going to do the things that you feel like doing right now or that feel good right now, unless you understand that you've got to parent yourself, you've got to push yourself, you're not going to make your dreams come true. You're just not. If you blame the government who you think is supposed to save you, or you blame politicians who you think is supposed to save you, or blame your company that you work for who you think is supposed to save you, or you blame the market, it doesn't really matter, mm. or your parents, the whoever you blame is the person you ultimately give power to. Let me tell you something, homie. These women ain't going nowhere. These clubs, these parties, all this shit ain't going nowhere. The more weird you are, is a reflection of how committed you are to focusing on your shit, molding and shaping and developing your ideas and your craft so that when it's time for you to make your rounds, you gonna fly. You're a man. You are a man. Stand up and be a man. Make the hard decisions, make the sacrifices, make the unpopular decisions, and become comfortable in your own skin. And if you are not a person that you are comfortable being alone with, that is the one person in this universe that you have full power, full right, full responsibility to change. There's a moment when every boy realizes no one's coming to save him. And that's when he becomes a man. And some boys never get there and stay children forever. When do you become a man? When you get a driver's license? Like, what do we do? You're 16, we give you a driver's license. Okay, well, wait, like, you get a job? Like, when do you become a man? You become a man when you become responsible for other people. And part of that is taking accountability. And so, like, I am very new to this being a man thing. <laughs> and I'm still not there. And I'm on a path. You need to do what you're supposed to do, not what you feel like doing. That's the difference between a man and a child. You do not become a man doing what you feel like doing. You become a man doing what you're supposed to do. A man is supposed to take care of his family. You live in my house, fill your belly with my food, put you behind on my bed because you're my son. Because I like you, because it's my duty to take care of you. I owe a responsibility to you. Every day, I don't feel like doing things that I still do. It's called discipline, it's called being a man. It's not about feeling like doing it. If you only do things you feel like doing, you know what you end up doing? What? You end up sitting around with a belly, drinking soya latte bullshit. That's what you end up doing if you only do what you feel like doing. You have to wake up and say, I don't feel like training, but I must train. I grew up on a, in a culture that told me going to war made you a man. Going to prison and coming back, coming back makes you a man. Um, making a million dollars makes you a man, you know, and, and it doesn't. And you don't know it till you've done all these things and realize, damn, still I'm still a, a little boy.